Hey guys, it's Ed Bud here, your favorite YouTuber. I'm back with a bumper vlog for you today. Lots and lots going on. I've got some Q&A questions from my YouTube buddies, some exciting news about some incoming shoes ready for review, and I'm gonna give you a breakdown of my training over the last few days. And I've also got a very important viewer request. If you're new here, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications down below. Viewers, I have a request of you. Any of you who have been wearing the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent, I'd like you to please get in touch via my special Gmail account. I'll throw the Gmail account onto the screen here so you can see. It's edbudshootube at gmail.com. If you've been wearing the Next Percent and you've got them up to around about anywhere between about 50 and 100 miles, I really, really love some of your input. How is the shoe holding up over that distance? Get me some pictures, perhaps some videos as well. I'm gonna put them all together. Uh, I really wanna get a general consensus about how well the next percent is holding up over the miles. I've got a feeling that it's gonna hold up way better than the Vaporfly 4% and the 4% flying it that came before it, but I really wanna get lots and lots of data in from lots of places to give an overall conclusion. So please get in touch if you can. It'd be absolutely fantastic. I really do appreciate it. So, on to some of the incoming shoes that we have. So just today we have the Reebok Floatride Energy 2. This is actually the first Reebok shoe I've actually come into possession. Here it is. It's in a kind of dad colorway, but I like it. So we'll hopefully get out in this one over the next few days. Initial impressions, quite light. And the foam's real, real squishy. There's an awful lot of give there. Feels kind of plush on top, like in the tongue, not too thick. And some very odd laces, almost sort of rope style laces. So the Floatride Energy 2 from Reebok will be adding these in the next couple of days to give you my initial impressions. Second shoe that's incoming is the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. I know a few other YouTubers have done some reviews on this one. I'm really, really excited to sort of match it up against some of the other carbon fiber plate shoes that I've got. So hopefully that should be around tomorrow or the day after. So I'm gonna go out for some tempo miles in that one and give you my honest opinions. On to training over the last few days next. Really all about keeping some consistency. So I hit it for seven miles, around about seven minutes, 29 seconds per mile. Absolutely bang on, really target pace. I was aiming for around about seven minutes, 30 seconds a mile. Racking up some more miles in the Adidas Ultra Boost 20. I think I'm up to about 72 miles now, so we're nearing that sort of magic 100 where I'll give you my 100 mile review. I've got lots and lots of views on this shoe already, so it could be quite a long video. So well paced effort there. I was really, really pleased actually looking at the consistency of pace across the seven miles. It was about seven degrees outside, so obviously ideal running conditions really. Certainly for me, somebody doesn't really like running when it's too warm. I think it's absolutely spot on for me. I really struggle in the heat. Keep my distance as per usual, best I can. I've been messing and modding these shoes lots and lots over the last few weeks different laces, messing around with different insoles and things like that. I think I've just about found a reasonable combination now. Next day up, I was limited on time, so it was a quick four miles before the evening meal in the Saucony Triumph 17. So those four miles were about seven minutes, seven seconds per mile. It was a little warmer than the previous day. So up the pace and the cadence up to about 170 steps per minute. Things were feeling really, really good in the Triumph 17. Very, very much enjoying the Power Run Plus midsole. And don't really feel the weight all that much in the shoe, even though it's this more weighty shoe than some of the other stuff I've been using of recent time. They're just a lot more nimble on the foot. It's hard to say, really. Trying to win people over with this shoe, they're a little bit hesitant because of the weight. I think they really do sort of defy that highly cushioned kind of bracket that some people put them into. You get some really good return from the midsole, the more and more sort of energy you're putting into it. So I think it was a good about 80% of effort over that run was up in that kind of tempo and threshold pace. Some really promising signs, certainly higher paces in heavier shoes. I was hungry for more pace the next day. It's kind of quite addictive running fast. At the moment, it's almost like I'm too excited when I get outside to run because it's in your mind, you're looking forward to it all day. So I hit it for six miles on the Thursday at seven minutes, two seconds per mile in the Nike Alpha Fly Next Percent. I had around about the same cadence as the day before in the Triumph 17, and heart rate was a tiny bit higher, but you would expect that at slightly faster pace miles. I added it up in about 90% of the run 
was in tempo or above pace so it was a hard effort and then 50% of it was in threshold or VO2 max pace. It certainly felt tougher though than it needed to be due to foolish clothing selection. I was about 11 degrees centigrade out there and I was wearing a long sleeve top and a hat and gloves. The gloves were mainly for mental protection, I think, from opening gates and touching stuff. I don't think I'm going to get a job as a personal valet though anytime in the future. These shoes were like a, a siren calling to me from the shoe sanctuary. They just feel so great when you're running in them. I really can't express how kind of nimble you do feel. A lot of people saying they look clunky, they look weird. They probably feel weird. Well, I'm telling you now, they, they really don't. They are loosening up a little bit, I can tell, round about the toe box. But they handled the grassy, twig-laden sides of the track that I was using pretty well, as I had to take evasive action on a number of occasions. You know, some people just choosing to take up the whole path and they don't seem to understand social distancing whatsoever. I've got to be honest, I've taken to vocally shaming them and saying something as I go by. I've just had enough of people not following that two metre rule. They're just not being courteous, they're not being sensible. It kind of irritates me. I go out of my way to ensure that I don't go near anybody when I'm out running. Why can't they do the same? No real news on these yet in terms of release. Let's hope it's sooner rather than later. Who knows when all these kind of restrictions are going to be lifted. I'm going to use these up and enjoy them while I've got the chance. I'm not just going to leave them in the box, that guitar behind the glass case sort of attitude. I'm going to get them out and use them for their intended purpose. So that means I will be taking them up to 100 and quickly as well. If you've got any questions on the Alphafly Next Percent, please do place them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer them. Over the weekend, going to do a longer run, possibly on the Sunday, and some more speed work on the Saturday, depending on how I feel. So lots and lots of YouTubers have been collaborating recently, trying to lift the spirits, keep people occupied. So I've reached out to a couple of my YouTuber buddies, Emily Heller from Run Like Heller, and also my good buddy Andy, the Forest of Dean runner. I threw a couple of questions out to them. First one was, what shoe are they most excited about in the coming months? For me, it's the Saucony Endorphin Pro. That's really my most sought after future shoe that I'm really looking forward to. I really love Power Run Plus that's in the Triumph 17. Oh, I know there's another variant of Power Run in the Endorphin Pro. I'm really keen to kind of pair it up against, well, probably the Alpha Fly, the Next Percent. Also put it up against the Hoka Carbon X as well. How about you guys? Right, and I'd have to say that I'm most excited for the Saucony Endorphin line, so I guess that's three shoes, but we can make it work. It's the Pro, the Speed, and the Shift. I'm actually most excited for the Speed and the Shift, and the Pro is good, but I think it's going to be a little less of what I'm looking for, but I'm really excited to try those out. So it's really difficult to pinpoint one particular shoe that I'm super excited about for later this year. I do have one in mind, but an honourable mention obviously has to go out there. For things like the Beacon 3, the Rincon 2, Nike are going to be releasing their suite of shoes in the summer. The Saucony Endorphin range, the Asics Meta Racer, oh, there are so many incredible shoes being released this year. It's a super exciting year for us runners. But the one that I am most excited about, being completely honest with you, is the racing brother of this thing. This is the New Balance Fuel Cell TC training and competition, and I cannot wait to get my hands on a pair of the RC, the racing and competition. New Balance have done some amazing things, uh, especially for me recently, running in some of their awesome shoes, the 1080 version 10, the Beacon V2, the Fuel Cell Propel. They've all been shoes that I've relatively got on with, uh, well, got on with very well, and this thing is absolute fire when it gets going. So I cannot wait to see what the RC is gonna be all about. Okay, so that's everybody's shoes they're kind of looking forward to. What's been the biggest letdown though in terms of shoes over the last year? You know, sometimes a shoe just doesn't hit the spot. I think for me, probably over the last year, the biggest letdown really was actually the Pegasus 36 Shield. It just didn't work out for me. It kind of felt really dull in the midsole. It didn't really feel like a Pegasus to me. It certainly didn't feel like the Pegasus 36 standard version. The water repellent properties of the upper on that shoe really did make it quite a stuffy shoe and a very odorous shoe over time as well. How about you guys? What were your most disappointing shoes? 
All right, Ed, so I've had a couple of disappointing shoes this year, but I'd say that the one that kind of underwhelmed me the most would be the Skechers Go Run Ride 8. Sorry. I loved the Go Run Ride 7. It was one of my favorite shoes of all time, and I was so excited to try the new version with the hyperburst midsole that everyone had been talking about. And then I got this shoe and I was kind of like, Oof, this is it? It's too firm for my liking. The insole slips backwards and it's just, it's just not for me. So you'd love to say that you had no shoes that you were really disappointed with, but there always is one or two shoes that are disappointed. An honorable mention goes to the Nike Zoom Fly 3, just a shoe that was an absolute disaster, especially it seemed to be as the sizes got bigger, it got clunkier, heavier in the front end, just a horrible experience. But the reason I didn't give it to that shoe is because every time I ran in it, I actually seemed to run in it quite well. So the most disappointing shoe, as you can see, is the Saucony Kinvara 11. Now I never tried a Saucony shoe. I got this because lots of people raved about the Kinvara range. And I have to be honest with you, I do not know what all the fuss is about. And I know I'll be upsetting a lot of Saucony fans, but for me, this thing is like running in a Converse, like a skater shoe. It is flat, it is, it's just got nothing to it. It is the most awkward shoe that I've ever run in. There's, it just doesn't even fit my foot shape. There's just something about the shoe and it's really sad because the upper and the way it fits and it locks down on my foot is really, really good. But the midsole, the power run, I think it's just power run, it's not power run plus, the power run midsole, it's just, oh, this, I'm really sorry guys, but this has got to be my most disappointing shoe in the last 12 months. Thanks for your views guys, I really do appreciate contributing to the channel. I think you'll probably see me popping up on those channels very soon as well. More from my shoe tubing buddies very soon. Before I go, it's important to have a musical interlude. Now, over the course of the last sort of week or so, I've been really getting back into the old 50s rock and roll. Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis, Chuck Berry, and of course, the King, Elvis. So we have been watching some of his old films. I really love those old Elvis films. Kind of simpler times. Girls, 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 and one of my personal favorites, fun in Acapulco. Elvis has always got like a job at some holiday resort or something where he, uh, he kind of does that job during the day and then he does a little bit of singing on the side in the evening. Kind of follows a tried and tested template. But it just cheered us up, you know, seeing Elvis in those exotic locations. Kind of makes you just feel happy, you know. He's just got a really nice demeanour about him in those films, always smiling. Aside from that, it's just been Johnny, Johnny Cash all the time. I've been listening to lots of Johnny Cash. Even when I've been going to the supermarket, if I've got to use the car to go and pick up quite a considerable amount of stuff to take it to my folks. I've been listening to Johnny Cash in the car. Cry, 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 Folsom Prison Blues, Big River as well, I really love that tune. Right guys, it's time for me to mosey on out of here. Hope you've enjoyed today's vlog. Make sure you stay positive. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below. Give the video a thumbs up, please. Make sure you comment below with any questions you've got about anything in the vlog today. And please do contribute about the next percent video that I'm making. Share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.